Welcome back everybody. Today we're now just under a month until Dawn Trail. So I'm back on my main to focus on preparing for the next expansion. In this video, I'll show you the key preps I'm doing to give me the best chance to make a ton of gil at the beginning of the expansion and be ready to level my various jobs. Part one, the in-game currencies. There are quite a few in-game currencies that I can max out now. This will benefit me tremendously at the beginning of Dawn Trail by farming them now it will save me a lot of time from having to farm them when I actually need them. Nothing sucks more than losing precious gill making time at the beginning of an expansion because you didn't prepare ahead of time. Back in Shadowbringers, Squeenix introduced bicolor gems as a reward for completing fates. These gems can be used to buy cosmetics, riding masks, and many other cool items. Though the most important items at the beginning of an expansion are the rare crafting mats that can only be bought with these gems. The mats tend to sell for ridiculous prices at the start of the expansion, so by maxing out the gems, Gems now, you'll have access to use or sell these mats on day one. You receive 14 gems per fay for Inwalker and 12 for Shadowbringers. That's just under 80 fates in order to reach the max. I know that sounds like a lot, but if you break it up into smaller groups by doing your weekly fate quota of 10, this will leave you with just around 30 fates to complete before Dawn Trail. The next currency to focus on maxing is your sacks of nuts. You get these sacks from killing rare mobs in Shadowbringers and Inwalker. The easiest way to farm these is by joining Hunt Train. These trains are constantly being run across the various servers and data centers. Each data center has its own dedicated Discord server with the hunt schedules posted. I'll leave links to the various servers in the description. Some people are thinking the nutsacks will be leaving in Dontro because each other hunt currency lasted only two patches. But I myself am willing to put in the little effort to max out my nutsack and gamble that it will be the currency used in Dontro. That's because I'm only 1500 nuts away and it will allow me to also farm my next currency on my list. The various tombstones. Although both causality and comedy tombstones will be leaving in Dawn Trail, you'll be able to convert them to poetics. Right now, I've been using causality to collect various Manderville relics for the jobs I intend to level first. My plan is to have a job relic for each available role. Although the relics cost will be converted to poetic tombstones after the expansion, if I complete a few jobs that I intend to level early, then it will be less work later in life when I get the completionist itch. If you still haven't gotten your best gear for your primary job, you could use comedy tombs to upgrade your gear but you'll be replacing the gear fairly early on while leveling so at this point it would probably be better just to save the tombs to convert to poetics i'm currently using my poetic tombstones to buy the level 80 gear for the new viper job the viper will be sharing gear with the ninjas so you can buy the item level 530 fighting gear at the castarium this gear will be better than the gear you receive when you start the job i would also buy the casting gear for the pictomancer but fortunately it is already being used by my blue mage so I'm already done. If you find yourself still short on tombstones after finishing hunts, the next quickest way to farm them is to just do your daily roulettes. Just find a few friends or go in solo. You can complete a Manderville Relic upgrade just about every other day, which gives you plenty of time to max out tombstones and have a few maxed out relics ready for Dawn Trail. This leaves me with my white and purple scripts for both crafting and gathering. At this point, almost everything you can buy with scripts are worthless. I've begun to just not bother using my scripts. We'll be receiving new scripts colors in Dawn Trail and we'll be able to convert these old scripts into whatever the new white type will be but you'll be earning quite a lot very easily at the beginning of the expansion while leveling so I don't find it necessary to max them out just to convert them in Dawn Trail although if you still want to max them out or get close to maxing them out you can always do your weekly custom deliveries on a crafter or gatherer and this will basically max them out before Dawn Trail the last currency you'll want to work on before Dawn Trail is something I brought up before. But as the late great Stan Lee used to tell his writers, every comic is someone's first comic. So I'll mention it again. Be sure to have a nice hoard of the various crystal pieces. If you are planning to craft, you'll be going through quite a lot at the beginning of the expansion by just leveling. The price of the crystals will be ridiculously high and the last thing you'll want to do is go farm them, especially when the prices for the new items can drop upwards of 90% in the span of just 24 hours. Trust me, just spend a little time each day working on farming now. Worst case scenario, you don't use them and just sell them for ridiculous early expansion prices. Part two, my prep work. With being under a month away, it's time to begin setting up for a clean slate for Dantra. You'll want to stop making raiding materials like food and potions as soon as possible. That is, unless you are still working on a project like one of the ultimates. In that case, just make enough to get you by. So off all your stored in-walker mats, you'll want to have the space for all the new materials that come along in Dantra. 
I personally tended to hoard a large cache of side two venues for Levaquest turrets, though I've already sold off most of them because I won't need them in Dondra. I'm holding on to just enough to complete my levy quest through June 11 and a few more to use to level my crafters. But otherwise, I'm done hoarding them. I did the same with my baked eggplants. I'll save a few for leveling in Dondro, but otherwise I sold them off. As I mentioned, I saved enough turn-ins for levy quest through June 11. But you may be asking, why if Dondro doesn't come out until 28th? This is because I want to start the expansion with 100 levy quests available to me. That is because levy quests are one of the fastest ways to level your crafters. You receive six levies a day, so it takes 16 and a half days to reach 100. This means I need to stop doing turn-ins for Gil on the 11th. Technically it's 12, but I'm going to be safe and just say 11. That way I know that I have 100 no matter what time I start playing. I'll be saving a few extra side two venues for turn ins because I plan to level my culinary first and it appears right now I'll receive full XP until at least level 91. Hopefully we'll unlock the crafting job road quest as soon as we get to the first zone like we did at Inwalker. You may also want to go to your grand company and start making one of each level 90 daily turn-ins for each job. Save them for Don Trail, use the ones you need to reach level 91, and then sell off your extras. But there'll probably be easier ways to level. I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to invest that much extra time. Next, you'll want to clear out your retainer bags. Sell everything you can and try to remove all useless items you may have been hoarding for years. It doesn't matter if you have two retainers or all nine. You'll want to have as much free space as possible. Starting in Don Trail, all gear will have access to a second die. This may cause dies to skyrocket in price early on, especially the rare dies like the pure white and jet black, though the other dies may rise in price as well. In order to capitalize on this, you can use this time to unlock all the various dies locked behind the beast tribe reputations. I found this die chart on Reddit with all the various dies locked behind a realm reborn beast tribe. The V stands for die vendor, C is craftable, F is for firmament, but can also be bought at your island sanctuary. I'll leave a link to the Reddit post in the description. Speaking of Island Sanctuary, I'm still doing my weekly turn-ins. I just copy pasta the daily recommended list from Discord and receive a nice surplus of calories for little effort. These I'll be using for the dyes, level 9 materia for permamelds, and high cordials to help speed up the leveling of my gatherers. Although the island will not be updated in Dondro, it will still be beneficial for quite some time. Note, every time I bring up this Discord, I'm asked for the links, so I'll just post the link in the description. Going back to the beast tribes real quick, I want to mention that I will be using some of them to level some of my jobs. By doing the elephant and pixie dailies, I'll be able to earn almost 5 million XP every day. I tend to use this to level jobs I don't really enjoy. For instance, I'm not a big fan of healing, so I will use this and frontline roulette in order to level them. I could always ignore these jobs, but come on, that's not really true. I miss finish them da! During the remainder of the month, I want to finally finish Eureka and Baja. In Eureka, I'm level 42 and I know I can easily reach max level in just a few short hours. I've seen the videos on how to cheese the remaining levels, but just never got around to doing it. I went in recently on my alt account and there's quite a lot of people grinding levels in there right now. Though I suspect that Eureka will become a ghost town once Don Trail comes out. This is what happened at the beginning of Endwalker. So if you want to finish Eureka, now is the best time. The same time crunch isn't necessary with Baja. A lot of people tend to use Baja to level alt jobs. So you'll still find people farming there even with the new content available. With that being said, I may put off completing Baja until a later date. Though I do want to complete them soon because these zones have some nice gill farms and they have the only remaining triple trier cards I need to complete in order to get the match. So this is a look into most of what I have planned to grind during the final month before Dawn Trail. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any suggestions or any opinions on this video. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video and maybe subscribe to the channel to be notified of more videos like this in the future. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye.